any old dying, any old dying, any, any, any old dying. You look sweet, talk about a treat, you look dapper from your nappy to your feet. Dressed in style, brand new tile, your father's old green tie on. But I wouldn't give you top as free roll, what chain? Old dying, old dying, any old dying, any old dying. You listen to this record player anyways, 12 pounds if you're interested, and you can have the half dozen records going with it, if that's of any use to you. We'll play some, you know, if you like. Bring you back to childhood days. <laughs> the little lamp is four pounds ten. All you need now is the electric bulb in it. Bargain. Only bargains on the stall. No, there are no bargains. <laughs> Genuine, hand-knitted stretches further, more hygienic three and six. Or how about these? One and six do your thing, king. We sell uh, knitwear, very good knitwear. Very cheap, very good, good quality. Wash well, wash very well, very good. Any old dying, any old dying, any, any, any old dying. Well, how did you come to know anything about well, musical boxes? I was over in England with a man called Graham Webb in the Portobello Road. And while I was there, I learned all about them. But when I came back here, I found that very few people did. So I was able to get them quite reasonable. And I was also able to get um, one, say, broken, which nobody could repair. So I found I was able to repair them myself quite easily. So that's why, as I say, we called ourselves a musical antique company. You look sweet, talk about a treat. You look dapper from your nap to your feet. Is this your a full-time job for your hobby? Well, at the moment it's a full-time job, but I'm a doctor, in fact, mm -hmm. and I gave that up just to do this do for this. the moment. Doctor of medicine? Yes. Oh, I'm sure your patients will miss you. Uh, <laughs> well, I'll be going back to them. What is the range of prices in your... Well, it goes from about four and six up to three or four pounds. I put it this way, last week was very good, and this week isn't so good. <laughs> I see. What did you sell last week? These drawings. Painting. How much do they go for? A pound uh, for the big ones and ten bob for the little ones. And what kind of people buy them generally? Um, I don't know, a mixture of everything. Sort of mummies with little Lovely children people. and dear sweet people. <laughs> do you think it's mainly attractive here for young people? No, no, I think a bit of everything. <laughs> you like a flower? The flowers are lovely, yes. How yes, much do they go for? They're two shillings. Two shillings a flower? Two, two shillings a flower and they're handmade. Yeah. An unnamed store in town is selling them at 12 and 6 each. Dressed in style, brand new tile, your father's old green tie on. But I wouldn't give you top as free roll, what chain? Old iron, old iron. 50% I'd say are the same people coming back every week. And 50% are new people coming every all the time. And do you think they're locals or young no. people? or uh, Mostly young people, I would say. Um, possibly just for the interest of it. Uh, I think it's not necessarily the young people that are buying. Well, they're silver, you know. And um, you can get some larger stuff. You know. Some of the other stalls have larger antiques, tables and stuff like that. Um, but we keep it small. What, for instance, would be your cheapest item? Ten shillings. What well, are these beer bottles for two shillings. There. Where do they originate from? They're Glasgow, actually. Yeah, Scotland. Any old iron, any old iron, any, any, any old iron. You look sweet, talk about the treat. You look at that coming up to your feet. How do you find business is in a market like this? Have you ever done this kind of thing before? Uh, I used to sell some in Liverpool, yeah. Um, similar sort of idea. We used to hang them on railings, you know. Uh, just sell them for a few shillings, kind of. How did you come to hear about this? Uh, well, I, I live just around the corner. Uh, there's a guy called Eamon Cannon who's doing it. You know, he, he, he's just pretty near. I heard it about a few weeks ago. You know, but, uh, you know I'd, I'd, I'd often sort of walk down here and thought somebody ought to do something, start something. You know. It's very well, nice, colourful. Could you show us one of these things and explain a little and how it's done? Yeah, well this, this one's done on aluminium, using printing ink, and then varnish afterwards. So, um, yeah. They're all pretty abstract, you know. Mm. People like to see different different things. And, uh, and they're on tin? Or? This particular one is on aluminium, yeah, it's, it's a new idea. Eamon, what gave you this bright idea in the first place of starting the market in Well, I think, well, I've travelled a great deal, travelled around Europe and around the near and far east, and that. 
we, we thought there were so many so many open air markets all over that we've been frustrated for a long time I feel in Dublin about open air markets generally so we decided why not open one this year in Dublin and you're living here yourself I think in the lane yes indeed I, I live right in the, in, in the middle of it all if you like and how did you actually go about putting it into action well it, it's taken it's taken a long time because first of all we had we had to approach the police and we, we went to them on the 4th of April and told them we were having a market and they said very well okay 4th of April 1970 1970 yes indeed and uh, we went, uh, we told them what we were doing and then we went to the corporation and we had the corporation down we told them what we were doing and they said go ahead and after that it was just Zoom. But I wouldn't give it up for all what Jane, oh Diane, oh Diane.